Hey, what's up? I've got some more lore content for you guys. The recent patch that happened managed to tone down lots of strong decks from last meta, but suspiciously, Janna has managed to dodge any significant nerfs and maintains her spot as the best champion in Legends of Runeterra. Today, we have two Janna decks to cover, alongside a cult classic that has shot up in play rate and win rate over the weekend, so trust me, you don't want to miss out. That way you have a good understanding of what's strong, whether you want to play the best decks themselves or if you want to know how to counter them. Let's see what these strong decks are, shall we? Welcome to Meta Report. And surprise surprise, we're going to be starting this off with the hottest, most powerful deck from last expansion that managed to not get any significant nerfs and that is Neela Janna. Coming in this patch with a win rate of 57.21% and a play rate of a whopping 8.86%, it is definitely the deck to look out for. Its best matchups include Ari Kennen, Heimer Jace, Jin Annie, and another variation of Ari Kennen. The worst matchups are Timo Caitlyn, Darius Nar Overwhelm, Shivana Freljord, and also Cultus. So getting right into it, the main theme of the deck is to draw a whole bunch of cards, turns 4, 5, and 6, and just kind of win through infinite pressure, uh, really strong units that have quick attack, and also infinite burn damage coming out from Piltover and Zaun. Yes, you heard me right, not Noxus. No, Noxus does not have the best burn in the game. Turns out P and Z does on top of beyond premium draw and also really good bodies. So we have Acorn coming in as a 1 mana 1-1 one, one elusive. Next to strike, reduce the cost of the most expensive spell in your hand by one. We want to be doing lots of discounts with many different cards in the deck because our Janna will level as we play discounted cards. So this is a very important effect. It's also really nice to get the spells cheaper. That way we can use our uh, mana and also cheapening cards to just like push a lot of pressure and get out a lot of damage later. Next we have Master Lookout, 1 mana 2 1. Once you've drawn 3 cards and around this game, grant me 1 1 and Brash. So he's going to be a 1 mana 3 2 with a keyword, which is uh, really really good for a 1 drop. Super aggressive, can just play him out early. And as soon as you draw 3 cards and you satisfy that condition, he and all other Master Lookouts will be buffed just throughout the deck. So really solid card, really nice to play early and scales pretty well into the mid game because of the Brash keyword. Next we have Pool Shark, one of our mini draw engines, 1 mana 1-2. When I'm summoned, draw 1 at the next round start and Granite Fleeting. The best times to play Pool Shark are on turn 1 if you have Miriam in hand. That way you can do Pool Shark on 1 and then Miriam away the card if you don't want it to be discarded through Fleeting or you can play it out. Uh, the second time to play Pool Shark is if you have multiple, so you play double Pool Shark on the same turn. And then on the next turn you will draw 2 from Pool Shark plus 1 round start and that's the 3 condition for your Master Lookout or for your Windborn Mariner, or for your Cloudwinder, and that basically just turns on a lot of combos in the deck as well. So Pool Shark, really, really good for those little uh, combo potentials there. And moving right along, we have Miriam Temple Caretaker, 2 mana, 2, 3, very good uh, stat line, of course. Play Updraft 1 to either draw 1 or refill your spell mana. So Updraft takes a card from your hand, you get to select it, put it right back in the deck. You will draw it later with a uh, 1 mana discount, so that's really nice. And then you either get to draw one right away or refill your spell mana to full, which is obviously super insane since we want to be playing units and casting spells. Miriam is super good for that. And like I mentioned earlier, the combo potential of like pull shark into Miriam is super nice as well. Next, we have triple mystic shot. Can't really say too much about it. It's mystic shot. It's always been here. Nila, two mana, two, three attack. Create a slipstream in the top six cards of your deck. Slipstream is a 1 mana burst speed spell that lets you draw 2, grant them fleeting, so you can updraft them and the fleeting will no longer matter, or you can like play them out and be pretty happy about most results in the mid game. Also, Neela levels by just drawing a bunch of cards, which we're going to be doing a lot of drawing, uh, not only through the Slipstream, but through many of our cards like the Pool Shark, the Miriam, also any of our other updraft effects, stuff like that, Cloudwinder. So yeah, we're going to be drawing a, a ton. So Neela's going to level and then she gets to deal extra damage, basically chipping away at the opponent's Nexus HP and making them softer for our other P and Z removal cards to also double dip as damage and finish out the game. Next we have Windborn Mariner. If you've drawn three cards this round, I cost two less. 
again, really good with the double uh, pull shark play, but also later on, if you play Janna or Cloudwinder, then any Mariner you draw into will just be free. And Janna loves that because that will be a discount and she needs that. So that's super good for us. Also just a 3-1 quick attack is super good pressure. The opponents don't want to block it. If they do, they go behind on the board. If they don't block it, they take three damage to face, which is again, softening them up for all of our direct damage. So really scary lose-lose situation for the opponents. Next, we have Howling Gale, which is a ramping damage slow speed spell. This is a really good card if you can updraft it early and then make it cheaper later. This thing can just hit like upwards of 5 damage on a unit, so you can kill like most champions in the early mid game. Like there's nothing that's going to really survive Howling Gale unless like a buff comes through or something like that. So really scary card forces the opponent to hold mana while you are playing out your turn and then using Howling Gale like at the end to just like kill off something that's like a premium target and the opponent has to worry about this constantly. Really, really strong card. Again, especially if you can get a discount on it. Then we have Vicrush, the exuberant 3 mana 2-2, elusive and also a tune. Again, super nice because we're playing units plus casting spells and creating a slipstream in the top six is super good. That way we can continue our Neela support. We can also get discounts, stuff like that. Super nice. Augmented Clockling, 4 mana 2-2, two, two, Elusive. Play, predict, then draw 1 and reduce its cost. It's draw and it's a cost reduction, so both Neela and Janna love it. So, really good slot in. It's also Elusive, so it gets in some cheap damage and is a great target for the plus 2 buff that we'll talk about in a second. One blowback for direct damage. Sometimes in the late game, you have a lot of cards in your hand that you don't want to play out, like some extra acorns or some extra like uh, other one drops like master lookouts and stuff that you can just turn into direct damage by discarding them. So blowback super good for that. Here's Eye of the Storm. This is the plus two attack buff I was talking about for Clockling. Uh, any of the elusives really love this, even Acorn. That way you can get an extra damage, get some extra draws. And this is also Janna's champion spell, which is really strong. But this one particular Eye of the Storm can be discounted by like updrafting in the early mid game. And then you can cast this draw and then Janna will like discount some things if she's leveled. And then you can draw more. And it's just kind of insane. You're going to be doing lots of drawing is uh, basically what I'm trying to say. And Eye of the Storm helps you get there while also putting extra damage on your elusive units. And then we have Janna. The by far strongest champion in Legends of Runeterra this patch. Really scary card. 4 mana 2 4. Updraft 2 to draw 2 at the next round start. That will fulfill your draw 3 condition as well for any of your other cards the next turn. Each round, the first 3 times you draw a card, reduce its cost by 1 this round. So if you do your updraft 2, uh, your next turn you're going to be drawing 3 discounted cards, which is half of her level up condition right away. If you have anything else discounted, then you can play those 2 and level her pretty reasonably in like 2 turns. Usually like really really easily by like uh, 2 or 3, so yeah, and then she'll be in a really good spot, she'll be elusive, you get AoE discounts whenever you draw, uh, and that's kind of insane, there's no cap or limit on the discount so she becomes an absolute value machine allowing you to play free card free card free card one cost one cost two cost two cost draw 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 one cost card two cost card one cost card draw 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 and it's just kind of like insane uh basically you get to play a lot on each and every turn and you're pumping out elusive quick attack and direct damage and making it really hard for the opponent to play on top of also removal uh, some of which is double dipping as damage some of which is five damage to a, a singular unit like we talked about with the howling gale it's just kind of insane it's just kind of insane this deck is an absolute menace to society and uh, the stats definitely back that up then we have Triple Divine Whirlwind. If you've drawn three cards this round, I cost two less, so it goes down to three. You can make it even cheaper with updrafting it early. Deal three to a unit and Mystic Shot the opponent's Nexus for free. Just, just because. Just because. Uh, we feel like it. We can deal three to something and then also two to Nexus. Hey, you have fun with that. You know what? Stack them. Just go ahead and stack them. Deal six to something and also four to the opponent's Nexus. Just decimate them at fast speed. That's fair. That's balanced. Uh, Noxus though. Noxus can't have that. But PNZ, y'all, PNZ gets to do that for sure with uh, discounts as well. So yeah, it's kind of insane. Divine Whirlwind's a really strong card uh, via my anecdote and also rant. Uh, Exalted Cloudwinder, 5 minute 2 2 quick attack. If you've drawn three cards this round, I cost two less. When I'm summoned, draw two at the next round start. Basically, a Janna effect, being able to draw extra next round starts really nice. That way, you can curve Janna on four and then play like a Cloudwinder or even two Cloudwinders 
on turn five and then turn six you're coming up with like just tons of damage and tons of units so if you're attacking on evens that's already really scary so yeah cloudwinder really good at refilling the hand and also finding lots of damage and is also a two attack quick attack unit this is the one card that got nerfed from the previous patch the entire janna engine this is the one it was a three two and now it is a two two lord help me oh oh my lord nothing oh man anything but the two two cloudwinder guys that's that's way too hefty of a nerf Next, we have Tide Dancer 635. When I'm summoned, draw a Neela. So, this is Neela Boat. Very nice. Each round, when you play your third card, give other allies plus two attack and brash this round. When I would gain fleeting, reveal me instead. So, if it's drawn through Slipstream or something like that, you get to keep it, which is really good for consistency. It's only one of because you're drawing through like 30 cards like every single game. So, you'll probably find your Tide Dancer, and that's really nice for Neela. That way, you can get extra damage in later. And that wraps it up for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how the deck plays out. I'll be giving context to why I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. All right, for the example game, we're going to be fighting Ash LeBanc, which uh, spoiler alert, we'll be covering later. We are good into this, so we should just be able to play out normally and uh, just win straight up. Let's do double lookout Mariner. We can probably pitch Mariner and the Cl actually Cloudwinder is so good. Always keep Cloudwinder in my experience. We can be on double lookout and that feels pretty nice. And then Cloudwinder will turn on the double lookout. Oh, we got Mariner back. So I guess there wasn't really much of a choice in the mulligan. We just end up with the same exact hand and that's fine. We have Janna in hand, which is good. The main thing we have to look out uh, against Ashla Bonk is bloody business. Bloody business can just kill out, uh, kill our Janna immediately. And that's really sad. So turn two is probably like what? Trifarian Glory Seeker. Nice, we get the extra damage in. We can kind of just like aggro them down. They don't have any healing, which is really nice as well. So any of our damage will stick and then we can clean them up with our P and Z damage at some point. LeBonk. Very likely they're on Elixir of Iron or Sky Splitter, right? I don't really mind forcing with Howling Gale, but I'd rather Howling Gale ramp up and we use it later. So we play Mariner now, or we play Mariner on turn 5. I'm down to take 5 right now. I want to play Janna for sure. Yeah, because like even if we bait a combat trick to protect, they still have bloody business mana. So let's do Janna and uh, get rid of the Miriam and also probably Divine Whirlwind. We could have open attacked with the Master Lookouts as well. Usually you want to do that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I could have got extra damage by just attacking the Lookouts, but that's fine. It would play into the uh, Sky Splitter and the Elixir of Iron. So maybe there's like no point risking it anyways. Marauders. Marauders are fine, I'm pretty sure. Don't really mind that too much. We can play a Mystic on one and block the other, or we can do Mariner, right? Mariner. They attack, they're gonna go up to 4 HP each. Yeah, we need to do a Mystic on the summon. I think we should just win this turn, though, because we don't really care about whatever it is they're doing. We can kill LeBonk, we can kill Marauders. Like, no problem. Trade that there. Play our free Mariner. Janna wants to see the discount, so that's nice. Literally free. Play Cloudwinder. That's another discount, plus we're drawing two round start. Uh, play our Neela, that's also discounted, because why not? And then win the game by casting Howling Gale, and then the opponent surrender. In three, two, one... No? No FF? I mean, our turn six is just kind of illegal, isn't it? Another Janna. I Dancer, okay. A free Pool Shark, I love that. So let's do this. Get some extra damage in there. Open attack. And then that threatens 14. This should force like harsh winds or something, right? Brittle steel, that works too, yeah. That is also a good choice. Second brittle steel, that makes sense to me. Yep, obviously I didn't want to play like a pull shark or anything and then let them get a development. It'd be kind of annoying. But uh, we can play it now, get the uh, Janna level, right? Where do you stand on? Oh, upon the driving game. Yeah, this seems a little insane. 
Ass, sure. Draw some more cards. Hello, Vicrash, you're cheap. Hello, Divine Whirlwind. Hello, Slipstream. Strength in numbers again. Well, I'm pretty sure... Okay, if they didn't surrender last turn, watch this. They're definitely going to surrender this turn. Draw some cards, get the Neela level. And then slam. Double Divine Whirlwinds. Even same action is fine. If they're on double Elixir of Iron, whoop de do. I mean, we're still going to win next turn. And if they're not, then uh, we insta win. Sky Splitter, sure. Works for me. Look at that. Take two to face. Look at that. Take two to face again. Decimate at fast speed. We can go ahead and do two attack unit and then I have the storm. Hello, blowback. Hello, Howling Gale. And yeah, it's just kind of over. It's like way too far gone. Alright, so you'll never believe it, but we have another Janna deck to cover. Surprise, surprise. This one is Teemo Janna. Coming in with a win rate of 58.58% and a play rate of 5.95%. It is very close to the 60% win rate uh, threshold, which is really scary. Its best matchups include Seraphine SI, Viego, Deep, and also Ari Kennen. Its worst matchups are Darius Nar Overwhelm, Renekton Sedge Overwhelm, Scouts, and also Karma Set, featuring Janna. So this deck plays like the same powerful engine of the draw cards, and also the discounted cards, but what it's trying to do is just win through a big champion strength turn with a few elusives on the board, right? It's got the Teemo, it's got Acorn at 3 of, and it's also got Augmented Clockling at 3 of. So it really wants to just like set up a board of elusives and win through champion strength. Bonus points if you can get Acorn to discount champion strength, which is a really good uh, combo where you want to keep them both in your opening hand. So that's where a lot of the power of this deck comes from. It's um, a lot more heavily reliant on the actual elusives to finish out the game rather than P and Z burn like the Neela version with Neela also contributing to some of the burn when she levels, of course. So yeah, we have Acorn doing the same thing as he did in the last one, discounting. Now we have Teemo as another elusive body. We don't actually care about the puff caps. We don't actually care about leveling Teemo. That's like never going to happen. The only thing we care about is the fact that he is an elusive body. Sometimes you can get the puff caps in and like the opponent might take like two to five in any given game. And that's pretty nice. So it's going to be some chip damage here and there. But yeah, we just want the elusive body for the champion strength proc. Triple form up for protection. Miriam doing the same thing as uh, she was doing in the last deck. Next we have Broadwing, which is just a very strong Demacia card. 2 mana 0 3 formidable challenger. Really nice in the early game to take control of the board. Also really nice later on when you do resolve champion strength. You can grab like a blocking badger bear or something. That way your elusives get their hits in and that's really nice. So really good just like early, mid, and late game. Mariner doing the same thing as last time. Being free. Janna loves that. To Howling Gale, again, literally the same thing as the last deck. Really strong once you uh, play a bunch of cards in a singular turn. Can cast this for 5 damage at once, which is really scary. Built Up and Castaway, now this is a new card. 3 mana 2 1 Attune Weapon Master. Weapons are actually really good with elusives. You can get like Scout Weapon on Teemo, and that's actually illegal if you pull that off. You can get uh, Pot of Pain, which is really nice. You can get the Overwhelm Weapon. All kinds of good stuff. Just really nice utility. Uh, on a body that also attunes, which again, just like the last deck, we care about playing units and also casting spells. So attune has some extra value here, while also giving us weapon synergy to put on our elusive units, or maybe on our Janna to protect her, and other stuff like that later. Triple Augmented Clock. Again, we care about the predict, we care about the draw, we care about the discount, but we also care about the elusive body for a champion strength, so we run it at 3 in this deck compared to the last one. Super good. Next, we have Eye of the Storm, which we're also tripling down on. Uh, four mana, again, give an ally 2-0, and also draw 2. Really good on the elusives, and helps you cycle, find the champion strength, that way you can get to your win condition as quickly and as consistently as possible. We have Janna doing literally the same thing as she was in the, uh, the last deck, so no real need to go over her again. 
Divine Whirlwind, again, same thing. I mean, so, like, as you can see, I mean, it's just, like, Janna and the Janna package is so strong. You could probably throw this into, like, any deck and it should just work. Uh, and I actually know this because I built a Jin Janna deck, which is just the Janna engine, plus also Jin and a couple skill synergy cards. And Jin is popping Lotus Traps from hand, like, constantly while you're drawing, like, eight cards a turn and also hitting with Divine Whirlwind. So I know this is true. I know for a fact this is true. You can actually just take the Janna package throw it with anything and you're good to go so that's basically what this deck is uh it's just uh the janet package plus elusives so we have cloudwinder and we also have champion strength which is our win con give allies 4-4 this round and rally so you can do this one of two ways you can do it on attack turn after attacking with your elusives and quick attack and then you get to attack a second time with enhanced stats or you can play champion strength on defense turn giving your allies big buffs and then also getting that attack so yeah you're usually pushing upwards of like 12 to 16 damage in one of these pushes so as long as you've done any amount of damage in the early game uh champion strength should just close it out make the opponent surrender especially if you cast this for like six or seven that way it's coming online much faster than it should by abusing the discount mechanic then it gets really really scary and that's why this deck has pretty close to 60 percent win rate and that's it for this deck rundown now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out and for this one we have timo nora Second region, Ionia, which is really interesting. So they're going to have early game removal from Bandle City. They're also going to have Elusive Blocker, so I'm wondering how this is going to play out. We have Teemo on one, which is really nice. We could probably pitch second Teemo, Clock, and Mariner. None of those cards are super good. We do like the form up, and we also really want uh, Champion Strength as soon as possible. Maybe Acorn too. Usually with this deck, you want to be on like Acorn plus champion strength in your opening hand that way you can get the discounts going right away that's a lot better versus decks that don't have outs to elusives so like here probably not the best but against like anything else that just can't out us too easily we would love that combo but yeah we are fighting team onora so they have lots of outs for acorn like even their own team would be kind of annoying here oh okay nice bird so we can get the teemo in get some puff caps going Again, not super relevant, but uh, still nice. Maybe they come up and do some extra damage here and there. Okay, all right. We have a, a very Teemo heavy hand. I mulliganed away extra Teemo and got it back. I guess it's time to play Puff Caps. Huh. Nora. Nora's fine. We can block play form up. That's so easy. We will take that for free. Goodbye, Nora. We don't really have anything else to do on two anyways. Like, I'm not playing Mariner out. I want to play Mariner later when he's free. So the form up is just, like, really well timed. We could probably also open attack again or play Acorn and then have second form up. I don't mind that either. Wait, what happens if we make Teemo's spell free? Is that, does that work like that? I think it does. That's going to be really interesting. So they could be on Pi or second Nora or a Teemo. Or, I mean, hey, they could even be running something like Shadow Assassin from Ionia. Tons of elusive blockers or anti-elusive stuff that they have going on. So I'm just kind of waiting. I'm just kind of waiting. There's the Shadow... Hey, I don't know how I called that. There's the Shadow Assassin, though. There she is. If block Teemo, go ahead. Um, I'll just replay Teemo. I don't think I need to form up that. You cannot escape. Yes, that's fine. Now we have one mana form up. And we can replay Teemo. Even right now it's fine. So yeah, we need to get to our champion strength ASAP. Wow, triple form up. This hand is kind of weird. Kind of not good. This pressures me to play form up this turn or actually play out the Mariner, which I don't want to do, but like, I guess I will if I have to. Just so I don't burn mana. Ah, they know about my form up. They don't know about this one though. This is ironically like, kind of an outplay, isn't it? Yeah, let's play the Mariner. Oh no, double skip, they put both of my, oh, it's not an outplay. Freaking skip, bro, no way. That card is way too insane. You're going to both of my form ups. Oh no. 
Well, we can do double quick attacks, I guess. Skip can kill my Cloudwinder, which is kind of sad. Because they also managed to get hit by a Chime. So this is a little doomed. I mean, again, I guess I could just, like, top deck champion strength and be all good, but... Hmm. I mean, the Cloudwinder is going to help us draw. Like, this card is just actually insane. Just draw two. Back with both. If they want to take the value trade 2-3-2-2, they can do that. We're getting damage on our 3-1 no matter what. Ah, oh, yeah, they did not want to take the damage. They're scared of my fourth form up. They've been counting. Bursting backpack, yep. And Mr. Thrift coming in. I'm going to pop some tags. All right. Draw me some cards. Draw me... Okay, draw me some good cards. I should have specified. That's on me. Medium. Updraft 1, 2, draw 1. Hey, that's the good card. That's the one I'm thinking of. Another Nora. Um, I guess we just do updraft. Draw 1 again. Oh no, don't you be putting more pup caps in my deck. Anything but that, bro. And then I guess we lead next turn with champion strength. Right. Um, I do want to prevent portals. I think that's pretty important for me. Mm, because of the scholar. And I can just replay the acorn. Can't hurt. Now we should just beat over the board. Maybe we're, uh, like, champion strength into champion strength. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, nice portal. They have to take an action to play it. But yeah, I'm gonna do the champion strength here. And we're gonna send it. Send it! Mm, I wish we were given, like, first action attack, but yeah, all these looses are so annoying. My quick attack's not that great either. Champion strength, let's go. You're gonna have to give me more than just Mr. Thrift, I think. Might have to give me one or two of these skips as well, would be kind of nice. I want my form ups back, I feel cheated. It's too late for you. Mm hmm. They don't want to give us any of the skips. None of them. No skip. Alright, all we have to do is top deck another champion strength and we're literally good to go. Or some PNZ damage. Holy. Alright, their hand's just a bunch of little dudes. Oh, and third skip as well. So they're trying to find uh, my champion strength in case I was on multiple. Kind of rude. Mm -hmm. Formidable, huh? Kind of pressures me to block that. We can withstand anything together. Your wickedness shall not prosper. I'm only taking two by doing this. It's not that bad. I guess I can play out the Broadwing. Like, my quick attack units are going to get me there. Surely, right? Alright, show me another champion strength now. Oh! Oh! Well, that's exactly what I asked for, and I actually got it. Um, I can attack with this quick attack unit first. I guess that's kind of better. Um, 
And also the 0 3 because it doesn't die. I just need to attack with the things that won't die. The 2 3 also won't die. And then we can champion strength. I guess that's a tiny bit more efficient, especially now that they only have two cards in hand. Currents, pull them down. <laughs> for kin, for the map. Yep, and then we'll do the champion strength so that way we get the rally and the full benefits. First thing, backpack is pretty irrelevant. I hope they just draw another one, to be honest. Yeah, I hope this is just like another bursting backpack. Conch? Alright, Conch is kind of annoying. Because Conch can get them like removal or something and maybe they live through this. This extra champion strength here. Breeze. Bursting backpack. I am intrigued. I am very intrigued. Poison Dart. That's what Control just created. I guess I could just die to Puff Caps. Now that I think about it, that's a little. Oh, never mind. Got him. Champion Strength is fair and balanced, especially when you draw multiple. The Riot Gods heard me and sent me that second one, though. And for the third deck, I did promise you a cult classic, and here it is. It is Ash LeBanc, coming in with a win rate of 55.05% and a play rate of 4.17%. It's doing really solid right now. Its best matchups are Nidalee, Karma Set, Kane Aatrox Cultus, and also Quinn Vane Aatrox. The worst matchups are Neela Janna, unfortunately, Jinani, Barrier Boys Shen Jarvan, and also Lissandra Volley. The main theme of this deck is to build a board, protect your essential units, and attack with five attack allies. That way you can get your reputation procs, which are really good effects later, and it's really nice to have them on a discount, while also having a very powerful rally effect later, which we'll talk about in the form of Incisive Tactician, which is really cool, but it kind of feels like a Demacia-ish playstyle, where, again, you just want to uh, get some strong units on the board and then pr protect them with, like, uh, combat tricks, and then also using strike spells to uh, get ahead so really really cool stuff we have double elixir of iron for protection really good into like pnz like mystic shot things like that being able to elixir and protect feels super good triple omen hawk which is a recently buffed card look at that omen hawk 111 still grants the top two allies plus one plus one but now can block elusive units that's really cool so now we have an answer to like teemo on attack one just play omen on defense one and that's pretty cool actually like i don't know it's just kind of an insane buff omen hawk can now just like come up and protect you and chump block the stronger elusives in the mid game so really strong time to play in freljord because there's like omen hawk buffs for the board centric freljord decks and also sky splitter which is a, a new card that was just added in the recent expansion which is a really strong combat trick for freljord as well so really good time to play things like jack zorn and also ash Bonk. so Feels good for longtime Ash LeBanc fans. Uh, if you're a returning player, I'd recommend this deck as well. Just hop back into the game and you have a comfort deck. So that's super sick. We also have a new tool in the form of an Explorer. Armed Acquisitioner, 2 mana 3-1. Pick an Explorer spell to create in hand. You're shown all four, you get to pick one. Uh, destroy Unit's Equipment, which is really nice into Cultus and also Jack's Horn. Explorer's Excavation, which is really good into any landmark strategy. Explorer's Blunder, which is really good into elusives or other keywords like Quick Attack, Overwhelm, things like that. Or also Explorer's Refreshments, which is a heal, which is good into Burn. So really flexible card. Depending on the matchup, you should have something to grab with Acquisitioner and use it later for extra value. And next we have Icefell Archer, 2 mana 3, 1 play, Frostbite an enemy. Since we are playing Ash and we still care about leveling her, we do have multiple Icefell's Archers and also other Frostbite effects. That way we can get her level in and help win the game sometimes. Next we have Triple Sky Splitter, again just like a really strong combat trick, plus 1 plus 3 is an incredible amount of HP. And uh, the plus 1 attack, I mean, can sometimes come up when you need to trade, but for real, like plus 3 health on a unit for 2 mana, like you are just able to outplay a lot. 
of um, direct damage spells. Albeit, right, we, we're still going to lose to, like, Vengeance and stuff and single tar target, like, oh, your unit just dies. But, like, man, against any damage spell, Sky Splitter is kind of insane. So, yeah, really strong card. Really good for protection, especially on our LeBanc. So, yeah, feels good. Double Darkened Spear. Equipped to an ally to give plus 2 HP, and then also you get an Omen Hawk effect whenever that ally attacks. That's super good. And then we can play a Naka in the late game if it, if it goes that long and get some pretty cool effects off from deck. My favorite is a Naka into a Naka, and then that Naka also summons Incisive Tactician, which rallies for you, allowing you to attack again with both Anakas. And uh, yeah, he gets pretty crazy, so that's really fun. You can also hit Assessor and draw a bunch of cards with it. So yeah, you can you can get some like pretty cool combos off with this Anaka. So really good card. Also, the weapon is just really nice. For two mana, you're getting plus two health, and then also Omen Hawk. Like, holy, that's a really good card. Next, we have Triple Trifarian Glory Seeker, two mana, five, one. Use this to contest early boards, early uh, champions as well. You can combo Glory Seeker with Elixir of Iron to keep her alive, trade over things. You can combo her with Ash, so Ash can Frostbite something, and then Glory Seeker gets to deal five to it and live. And that's really nice as well. Good combo. Love to see that. She's also good at Flash Freeze. LeBanc wants to see her do damage so LeBanc can level. Just a really, really strong early game card to kind of like set the pressure, right? Set the pressure up and uh, get it rolling. Triple Flash Freeze for Frostbite. Again, really good for Ash level and also um, Glory Seeker Synergy. LeBanc, which is our first champion. Quick Attack for a 5-2. Really nice. She actually like really matters because we need to level her as soon as possible. That way we get the mirror image. Mirror image is something that she gets on level up. And this kind of breaks the deck in a bunch of different ways because all of our units that are like really good have like on summon effects too, like Assessor, allowing us to draw more cards. And also Tactician, allowing us to rally multiple times on the same turn if we uh, target him with mirror image. We can target extra LeBancs for damage. We can target extra Ash for um also like extra frostbiting so really good stuff overall really strong cards so yeah we want to get lebanc leveled as soon as possible protect her as much as we can and use her to win the game in various different ways there's so many routes to winning with lebanc and that's what feels really good about this deck i love that this deck is also running legion marauder which is really cool this is like a very snowball-y card it used to be a meme it kind of still is but like it's a well-developed meme legion marauder goes a long way if you develop him early and then also use the spell to summon more marauders because you can kind of just get out of control as soon as these marauders attack like twice it's really hard for the opponent to start dealing with them especially if you're on multiple uh so a lot of times you can just develop multiple again and kind of like run away with the game via a big snowball effect and use the protection to keep them going so it's like having an extra champion to play around in terms of pressure so yeah i mean the marauders definitely come in clutch uh you don't have to run marauder i've i've been looking on the stats websites for all kinds of different ash lebonk lists and i run a list completely differently uh than any of them and they each run one different from each other so you can kind of just do whatever you want if you want to run marauders cool you don't have to uh, i personally don't but you can so yeah i think that's really cool about ash lebonk it's a really flexible deck there's a lot of good noxus and frelly support cards that kind of like Pull the deck in multiple directions, so however you want to build it is fine. Uh, I'm just using one of the base ones from the stats website, so again, if you are a returning player and you're already comfortable with Ash LeBlanc, you can kind of just like update your own too, so that's really nice. So yeah, Marauder is going to get pretty strong and uh, become a beefcake. And then we have our other champion, Ash, Frostbite a bunch, we know how this works. Then enemies with zero attack can't block, and that's really nice because we get the Crystal Arrow, make a bunch of things not be able to block us, also our attack effect. And if she's mimicked, then we have multiple of those. So really good win con to play around as well. Something that the opponent has to respect. Ash can be very scary in the mid to late game. And we have Bloody Business, which is a one-sided strike. Uh, if you get Reputation off, it's even better because it costs two. That way you can just make your ally strike an enemy, kill priority targets. This is super nice at making LeBanc or Ash or even a beefed up Marauder just be able to kill Janna and stuff like that too. And still live to tell the tale while you have like Sky Splitter protection and stuff like that. So really strong overall. I mean, it's a really good card. It's a one-sided strike. Even for four, it's worth playing. If you can get the Reputation and play for two, it's even better. It's such a good card. Next, we have Triple Trifarian Assessor, um, which helps us refill our hand if we have a few 5 attack allies on the board. 
then that feels really good for us. If she gets hit by Omen Hawk or also the Anaka weapon, that's really good too because she will count herself for the draw. So that's like something really important to keep in mind. Mulligan her away. You want Assessor to stay in deck as much as possible. That way you can draw her buffed up later and get the extra refill in, you know, in the mid game when you need it. Then we have Incisive Tactician, 8 mana 5, 5, Reputation, I cost 2 less, same Reputation effect as Bloody Business, and then uh, you can Rally, which is uh, really good. Uh, attacking multiple times a turn is kind of unbalanced, especially when you have big Quick Attack units, especially when you're Frostbiting with Ash, making things not be able to block, especially when your units are just like really massive, especially if you have Anaka or any other like on attack effect ready to go, like Marauders. It's just really good, so yeah, really strong finisher card. And then since we are running Marauders, this list also runs Strength and Numbers. 8 mana, summon 2 Marauders. Uh, if you resolve this at a good time and the opponent doesn't have an out, you win. Again, it's just like a big snowball effect. Really scary card, especially if you have other Marauders in the early game, or if you open multiple Strength and Numbers. You can just win through big Marauders. You really can. So yeah, that's one of the directions this deck can go as well, aside from Champion Pressure. Just win through Marauder, and that's a way to do it. Some other cards to consider are Hearthguard. Hearthguard's also really good, especially since his buff can hit Assessors in deck. You can also consider Brutal Skirmish as another strike effect and also weapon removal. Really cool there. And the final card that I would recommend looking at is Reckoning. This is a blowout card that Ashlebonk used to be known for. If you resolve it in the right conditions, you just win. So really good card there as well. Kind of like mix and match and do what you want with the list and go from there. And that's it for this deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. And for this one, we have the mirror match. It seems like Ashley Bonk is quite popular nowadays. Uh, however, I have Marauder on attack three, so it's kind of doomed for them. I also have LeBonk, so I mean, both of those are pretty good. Let's just get rid of Tactician because we definitely don't want him in our early hand. Omenhawk on one feels great. Both of our uh, three drop units. Also Sky Splitter, which we can float two for. Like, I don't know, this hand is just way too good. There's no way that they're the better Ash LeBonk gamer. Look, we have Omen on one, they don't. We already win. It's so free. Who are we hitting, though? Who are we hitting with our Omen? Ice Veil? It's pretty weak. Uh, yeah, we're passing. We just want to float the Sky Splitter mana. And then we want to... Oh, nice. Tactician's actually kind of a good one. LeBonk. I think LeBonk's better than Marauder because we have a, a protection hand. We can protect LeBonk. Uh, Marauder, we don't have a Marauder hand. If we had, like, three Marauders, I'd probably play him. Okay, so this is kind of a weird bait. That means they have... To see me. Brittle Steel? I will just react with Sky Splitter. This has to be Brittle, then. Yeah, that's, like, the only thing that makes sense. And then we can use Sky Splitter. And even if they match with their own Sky Splitter, LeBonk still lives, so... I don't really know if they have a plan besides this one. No, that's it. We just got two cards for one. That's so worth for us. The difference between LeBonk being 2 HP or 1 HP in this matchup is negligible. does not matter. What basically just happened is we traded Sky Splitter for their Sky Splitter plus also a Brittle Steel. So we come out ahead on that. Darken Spear. Um, I'm down to just Icefell Archer. That deters the attack, make them not want to get the effect off. Because we also have a blocker. Yes, that works for us. And then we can also... Hmm, I don't think I want to give them a turn 5 development because that could be Hearthguard if they're running Hearthguard. They could also run a couple Marauders, which is interesting. I'm kind of down to just open attack with these. It kind of sucks though if they do have something to stop LeBonk a second time, like a flat... Oh, we have our own freeze. I guess it's fine. It's probably fine. Okay, nice. It is fine, actually. We just get it all the damage in. Kelsey. Oh, oh, they're they're goofing. That's kind of insane. Let's have some fun. Yeah, let's do Marauder and then also Bloody. Try to kill the Telsey. If second buff, so be it. Alright, we still get the LeBonk level. We are two procs away from Tactician. Sag. It's okay though. It's quite alright. Ash. I think not. Ash, 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 ash. Double frostbite. 
double plus one plus ones. Um, hmm. I'm pretty sure I just have to ice fill archer again, probably targeting Ash to make her not want to swing. Because I can block her with uh, anything that doesn't get frostbitten, Show me a target. which will be my three two and three one. Hmm. Okay, what else? Is that it? Because I also don't mind using flash freeze. This is interesting. See, these are very two different takes on Ash LeBanc within the same game. Um, so I, I don't know. I just think this is really interesting. So we can do 3-1 here. Want. And we can also do 4-2 here. That's... Wait. Ash did not frostbite two separate enemies. Oh. Well, then that, that combo is just not that great. So... I think it might be better to do it like this, just in case. We put more damage on the Ash. Lush Freeze, second Ash, wow. Their hand's pretty good. But, um, yeah, this is fine. And then, I guess we're just passing. do something like this i definitely want to get the rally in the only way to do that is to have two okay don't tell me you have something okay that's not gonna work i can't play my tactician now but my idea was correct they just top deck bloody business to mess with me luckily it doesn't matter we just kind of went out from there that's really interesting though so yeah to wrap things up this truly is the month of janna you're going to be seeing her in many forums until the next patch and maybe even until the next expansion. So I'd recommend learning the ins and outs of her decks, or finding something to completely counter her. Along with the three decks I've covered this week, there are some honorable mentions like Lurk and Jaxorn, still being very solid choices. I'll probably cover them next week in full, but there are a few decks pushing out good numbers right now. This has been Meta Report. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one. Laters!